If you have a character that moves super fast, then this dash effect tutorial is perfect for you. Let me go ahead and get started and delete the effect so that we can make it from scratch. Now I had downloaded this character off Mixmo.com and I added some running animation to her as well as a run to stop animation. And now let's go ahead and add the effect. So open up your content browser and right click to add a Niagara system. Choose an empty emitter and hit create. Type in NS underscore dash and then double click to open it. We can rename this emitter by hitting F2 and I'm going to call it character. And then under emitter update here, hit the plus button and type in spawn burst instantaneous and give the spawn count a value of 200. This will emit 200 particles at once. And so now we need the particles to attach to our character. So under particle spawn here, type in mesh and then locate initialize mesh reproduction sprite. And then we need to add our character to the preview mesh and default mesh. So instead of going down here and finding the drop down menu, I like to just go to my scene, select my character, hit this folder button, which selects them in the content browser, and then use this button to paste them in, which is super simple. And then, so now they're attached to our character and we can see that they're emitting in the Y pose of our character, but we want them to animate with our character. So under particle update here, Go ahead and type in mesh again, except this time, locate update mesh reproduction sprite. Click to add it, and then go ahead and add the character again there. And now let's go ahead and add the effect to our scene just to make sure it will attach correctly to our character. So I dragged that in, let me go to frame zero, and I'm gonna center the effect and then drag and drop it onto your character. You, don't, you can choose none for this. And so now when I hit play, I can see the particles are attached to my action figure, which is amazing. So now back under NS dash, go ahead and right click and add another emitter. Choose empty and then hit add. Go ahead and rename this dash. And now under emitter update here, hit the plus button and type in spawn and find spawn particles from other emitter. Go ahead and hit fix issue for the first one and we're getting this other error because we haven't linked it to the other emitter yet. So under emitter binder, go ahead and type in character or whatever you decided to name this. So since I named my character, I'll click that and then go out. And I'm also going to increase the spawn rate here. This is important for creating a more smooth dash, but I just match the spawn burst instantaneous value there. And when I created this and I hit the fix now for the first issue, it instantly created the spawn particles from other emitter, which is nice. And hit fix issue for that. We will also have to, oh, there's a drop down arrow here. Also hit fix issue for that, which just added the solve forces and velocity, which is nice. And so let's go ahead and check off the sprite renderer here and go ahead and add a ribbon renderer. And so now we're getting this crazy ribbons that are all tied together. And so how to fix that is we go to the sample particles from other emitter and find this particle ID, ribbon ID, and go ahead and change it to ample sam to <laughs> apply sampled ID as ribbon ID. And in order for this to take effect, we need to go to the character's properties and change the calculate bounds mode to fixed and then check on the requires persistent IDs. This will link the ribbons to the individual sprites of this first emitter. And so now when I hit play, it's gonna look crazy because the lifetimes are too long and I haven't put the effect in the sequencer, but let me just play it. <laughs> Kinda crazy. Okay, let me go ahead and add this to the sequencer. Go ahead and hit this plus button and add a Niagara component and then with the Niagara component, hit the plus button again and add a Niagara system life cycle track. Let's drag this to frame zero. That way when I hit play on frame zero, we will get the trail starting from there, which is great. So now the trail's lasting too long and I wanna add some colors to it. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So with under the character emitter, go to initialize particle and let's go ahead and give this a random range float, but I wanna make sure that all the particles die by the time that my character stops running. 
So this will change depending on how long your character is going fast for, but I'm gonna give this a value of 0.5 and 1.5. And so now if I hit play, let's just see how that did it. So it's no longer emitting from my character, but the trail is still way too long. So let's go ahead and under the dash initialize particle, let's change the lifetime, another random range float to 0.1 and then 0.5. So now when I hit play, we should be getting more of the effect I had in the beginning. Yeah, that looks great. And so now we can add some color. Now, if you want to do this simply, you can go to this color mode here and go to direct set and then choose any sort of color. Now the effect I had in the beginning had a more of a gradient change. So I had it going from red to yellow. And in order to do that, we need to create a super simple material. So go ahead and go to your content browser, right click and add a material. I'm going to call this M underscore dash. Go ahead and double click to open it. Change it from an opaque material to translucent. And then right click and add a particle color. Go ahead and add the RGB to the emissive color and hit apply. And then back in the dash effect, go to the ribbon renderer and add the new material here. Then under particle update, you can hit this button and type in color. Find just color. And then with the color up here, use this drop down arrow and select color from curve. And this is where the magic happens. So this first value will be what the ribbon spawns at. So this is the ribbon closest to the character. So I'm going to give it a darker red value. Also, I'm just going to make this black so it kind of starts dark since it's really close to the character. And then I'm going to have it finish as yellow. And I'm making this a bit darker just because it is a night scene. So it's a missing, it's a missive material is quite bright. So I'm minimizing that by going darker here. And this is also set opacity lower and so now when I hit play nice so I still think that red is too bright in the beginning so let's just make this 0 0.05 and maybe a little less pink. and let's play this again nice. I think we can get more of a darker red value here and let's hit play. Nice. I'm liking this trail effect. Now, one other thing you could do is play with the thickness of the ribbons, as well as you can change them to tubes if you want. I think ribbons are really fun and I want to learn a lot more about them. Um, but this is a cool effect if you're just starting out with them. And under initialize particle here, you can go to ribbon attributes, ribbon width mode. You can change this from unset to direct set. And let me give this a crazy value of 15. This is gonna be some really wide ribbons. Hee hee hee. That's a bit too much. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make them, give them a random range float of one and two. And so now when I hit play, that's looking great. But one thing you have to do is check off the sprite renderer so that you're not getting the particles actually on the character, you're just getting the trail effect. So now when I hit play, we're getting the effect that I started with. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. That would help me out a lot. I have other tutorials on my channel that I think you'd like. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.